Hey y'all, I've got another um, books my boyfriend gave me vlog starting tonight with the uh, Game of Thrones. As the book cover says, it's just Game of Thrones, but the um, title page says A Game of Thrones, which is a very strange distinction. I don't know why it doesn't say it on the cover or on the spine, but that's, that's what it is. Um, I am matching it with my nachos uh bookmark that used to be scented now it's old and worn out so it doesn't smell anymore but I felt like nachos were appropriate for this book sure um the first thing i've noticed as i open it besides that title difference is our maps there's some very very detailed maps in here i absolutely love it i love when the maps have so much detail i sorry uh I absolutely love it. I love when all of the maps are so detailed like that. So let me just switch this camera around and show y'all. So here's the north. Look at the details. I love it. The frozen shore. The wall. Yes, I love it. And of course, if we have the north, we've got to have the south. High Garden, Dorne. Dragonstone, yes, King's Landing. This is so cool. I didn't realize how much of a fan I was until I just started recognizing some of these town na names. Um, so yeah, this is actually the first time that I'm reading this series. I've seen the TV show. And I loved it, at least the first couple seasons. Um, just like Wheel of Time, this is my first read ever. I am super excited. I am reading this as, yes, part of the Books My Boyfriend Gave Me series, but also kind of a buddy read, group read with um, Ben at Overly Average Ben and Grace Dehan. Um, They've already read the book, first book. Um, I'm way behind because you guys know what my TBRs are like. But I am super excited to read this and chat with them about it too. So, without further ado, I'm going to dig right in. So, George R. R. Martin does not believe in chapter numbers. So this will be an interesting experiment to try to keep track of all of these um, clips and videos for my vlogs. Um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting battle. Um, this is number two. And I've just read the prologue, and this is actually a rare moment where I actually kind of liked the prologue. It set the tone very, very well. Um, it just set the tone for everything this series is known for, everything that I saw in the show. I, it got, it's gotten me excited to read it already. And just the first page of the prologue, I've already got one quote written down. It says, There are things to be learned even from the dead. And that just, ugh. So I already can tell I'm going to love this. Um, so I'm going to try not to do like complete chapter by chapter by chapter because that'll get ridiculous because it's a big book. Um, I'm just going to check in when I have reactions and not say like, so in this chapter, this happened and not have be it. If I say that, then I have to have a reaction with it. I'm going to try to hold myself to that. We'll see if that actually happens or not. But I think this might be a fun vlog to be doing. So we'll see. So we've just met Daenerys' brother, Varys. I think is how you say it. I don't know how to say his name. Um, he is an absolute douchebag, and he's horrible. I, wow, he's the worst. Um, yeah. So, there's that. I just had to check in about that, because I don't remember him from the TV show. Although, I've seen pictures of the guy that played him, um, but I don't remember him on the TV show, so it must have been early on, but he's the worst. So, I've made further progress in... Um, a Game of Thrones, and please just, I'm hoping you all will just listen to this and not watch it, because I have this horrible spot 
under my nose from blowing my nose all week. It's just the worst part of being sick is that recovery afterwards. Um, so some thoughts so far further um, about Game of Thrones. We have um, met Count Drago, Drago? Uh, Daenerys is now husband and there are two things about that chapter that stood out to me first I absolutely love that description of Daenerys riding the horse and she says that Drogo gave her wind um, that was just absolutely beautiful and then there the very end of that chapter they're essentially first night together as husband and wife was so tender and sweet um it could have gone so differently because he was so big and so you know nomadic and a, a beast um it could have gone so differently but he was so tender and patient and sweet with her that i don't know i just loved it even though yes yeah, she's 14 so it's kind of weird but in a lot of history at that age girls are getting married i'm not saying it's right but you know in a lot of history by the time you get to be th 25 30 you're an old spinster so you have to marry that young so you can produce all of those kids that people wait for you to give um so there was that and then of course we had jamie lannister pushing bran off the tower um bran is now in his coma and um there was that whole incident i'm still not sold on bran uh his character along with sansa's character who i really didn't like in the show either um sansa is just the spoiled girl that you imagine she says she's completely in love with um her betrothed who's uh, Prince, he is absolutely terrible. Uh, I forget, I even forget his name at this point. Uh, Joffrey. He is just the worst. Um, but she thinks he's the world to her and ugh. Um, yeah, that's basically my thoughts so far. I don't really have a lot. I'm just enjoying the writing. Lots of food writing, of course. Everyone knows about that. Lots of little details. It reminds me a bit of um, Wheel of Time, at least Eye of the World, where there's lots and lots and lots of details to draw you into this world. I'm not sure we need quite as many as we get, but I'm still glad that they're there because I love all the details the authors put in because it really helps me draw into the world and the scenes. So in A Game of Thrones, Catelyn has arrived at King's Landing, essentially. I totally forgot that she was going here. All that had happened with Bran, really. Um, but she has made it now. We have met Littlefinger and Varys, and I've got to say that I liked the actors in the show more than these characters so far. Obviously, this is only a first look at them, um, and... You know, the narration of the audiobook has something to do with it, but they just, mm, I like them more in the show. Um, I, I mean, Littlefinger in the show was one of my favorite characters ever. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. Um, I just absolutely loved him. There was something that I was going to point out, and now I have to find it again because I forget. So... Catelyn wonders first how Littlefinger knew that she was there um, when she, because no one was supposed to know that she was coming. When she goes to see him, he tells her that Varys knew, and um, Varys knows a lot. He's got all of his spies around, but he knows more than he should. He knows not only that she was there where she was, who she was with, but why she had come to King's Landing uh, about this dagger that they had. 
and he asked to see it and that is like his character was brilliant in this show i can't wait to see what happens with these two characters Varys and Littlefinger because they were two of my favorite characters in the show maybe my top two um and so I can't wait to see what happens in the prose in the book that George R. R. Martin created with those characters so in A Game of Thrones I'm about maybe a quarter of the way through and an unexpected friendship has developed between Tyrion and Jon Snow <coughs> Although, unfortunately for John, it's kind of at the end of Tyrion's visit to the Wall in the north. He's leaving in the morning and asked if he wanted to pass on any message to his family at Winterfell. Um, that was kind of a touching moment that I did not expect. I didn't remember seeing that kind of thing happen um, in the show. So, we just met a character that I completely forgot existed. Um, well, maybe we didn't just meet them, but I was just reminded of them with a big scene that happens, um, in A Game of Thrones. We have Jorah Marma. Um, I probably said that name wrong, but, you know, guys, you guys know who he is. Um, if you've read the books, you've seen the show. Sir Jorah is, when I watched the show... He was one of my absolute favorite characters. I absolutely loved him so much. He was so noble, so right. He was fantastic, especially a great friend for Daenerys. Um, so I can't wait to see more with Ser Jorah. So I've made it to 50% of A Game of Thrones. Um, I feel like this is a good, good progress for all the books I have to read this month. And the short time I have to read it in. Um, yeah, so I have a couple notes here that I've just jotted down because I've been listening to the audiobook more than reading the paperback just because it's easier to do while I'm doing other stuff and get actually get through it. Um, so Sansa, yes, yeah, she is insufferable, but I can kind of see her, um, so yeah, Sansa is insufferable, but I can kind of see, um, her character, not motivation, but just something that I've kind of noticed about her. Sansa, all her life, she's wanted to kind of be in that princess status. She's wanted to be royalty she looks up to the royalty and everyone above her and so while she should be backing her siblings especially Arya um I can see why she is so flustered when it comes to does she back Joffrey or does she back Arya um she goes with Joffrey because he and his family um give offer her everything that she's ever wanted while she is insufferable and all that you know you can kind of see almost the point of it aria i absolutely love aria she is like just almost just like i was as a kid um aside from you know the whole winterfell thing and being the lord's daughter and all of that um i I was constantly mistaken for a little boy when I was little, especially like ages four or five, right before I went into kindergarten. I had an actual bowl cut, like it looked like you just put a bowl over my head and cut around it. Um, and I was always wearing like overalls and I looked like a little boy. So I totally get people mistaken a girl for a boy because that happened to me all the time. And to me growing up as a girl, um, just like with Arya, it seemed like the boys had so many more opportunities and such more fun than girls did. Girls had a lot more rules, um, at least for my, in my childhood. So I can relate to Arya so much. I love her character. Um, I mean, there's a lot going on right now because, you know, Ned has been in this argument with... Um, the king and now he's leaving King's Landing um, and 
you know, uh, Catelyn is now at her sister's, which no one knows except for the people with her, which is probably not a smart thing, but she's also kind of kidnapped Tyrion, although she's now given him his weapons back, so that's a little strange situation there. Um, Catelyn's sister is absolutely insane. She's, like, Catelyn's tried to convince her that, you know, the kid is sickly and not well, and she says he's fine, he's strong, and he's safe there, and she tells him that he, they're not safe anywhere because, you know, the Lannisters will come after them eventually. Um, so that is a weird situation, too. Um, yeah, we've met, um, Samuel at the Wall. Uh, he was another character that my interest kind of came and gone with him. Um, it waned with things that he was doing, but, um, he's an interesting character because he is, um son of a lord who doesn't want him he basically said either go to the wall or i will kill you um even though he's the firstborn son of this lord which usually means you're heir to the throne um his dad doesn't want him at all so that's an interesting storyline um so like i said i've made it to 50 percent and we'll see i'm really really enjoying this i have a feeling this is gonna become a five star read for me right now it's sitting at like four and a half star but I feel I have a feeling by the end of this that it's going to become a five star so I'm about 60 percent through a game of thrones now um and uh stuff has been happening so um Daenerys is pregnant with what she thinks is a boy and Khal Drogo has killed her brother with molten gold that he melted. Um, then we jump to Eddard Stark. Ned Stark is with the king who's been gored by a pig. Um, he killed the pig, but now he's... His guts are gored, he's bleeding to death, and basically on his deathbed, he has given uh, Ned Stark the role of being protector and hand to his son Joffrey, except when Ned took down the notes, Ned just wrote his heir, so kind of played him behind his back. Um, it's been a very, very long time since I've seen season one of this show, and I don't remember, like, um, I think I remember where season one kind of ended, but, which is where we're kind of leading towards in this book, I think, um, but, yeah, this is, I don't remember all of this, I remember the later seasons, so this is getting really interesting. Um, and, you know, Cersei is a bitch. She's not good at all. But I don't remember Robert Baratheon being this much of an asshole. He is such a... He's not good at all. He disrespects his wife Cersei so much um and so that is an interesting twist to this character that is supposed to be kind of held up he's the king um he's you know essentially brothers to Ned Stark who is like the most honorable out of anyone in this book and he this guy is just I Knowing what comes after his death, I don't want to say I can't wait for his death, but he's so bad that I will not be sad necessarily when he dies. Um, com it's complicated. 
Anyways, that's my check-in for A Game of Thrones. 60% through. Maybe by the end of this month, I'll finish this. And then be able to eventually move on to book two. Good morning, y'all. Um, wow. So I just read the chapter where Ned Stark gets killed. Um, first we've got King Robert has finally died. Cersei wasted no time, proclaimed Joffrey king. Ned and the council went to her with Robert's last wish, which, as we know, Ned kind of fudged a little bit to make it seem like um, Stannis was now the king. Cersei had him apprehended for treason, and then Littlefinger swooped in with Ned's knife and cut his throat. This is different than I remember it being in the show. Again, it's been so long since I watched the show. But I remember very clearly um, Ned Stark kneeling down on a, what you might call it, like a table to be beheaded. Um, that's what I remember very clearly. So... Obviously, things happen differently in TV shows than they do in books. Um, creative differences, differences they think would go better on TV shows. So there's that. Or I could just totally be remembering it incorrectly. Um, but that's a difference that I've noticed that I remember specifically. Um, so that is interesting. I'm about 62% through this book now. Um... Maybe I'll finish it by the end of the month. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, so um, I'm about 80% through Game of Thrones now. Um, and now I've just found out that Ned Stark is still alive. And this is why I, when I earlier said I didn't remember him dying this way in the TV show, that's because he didn't. He's still alive. They didn't kill him yet. Um, they're just holding him in prison now. Uh, so that explains the confusion there. I thought that they had just changed his death scene for the TV show to make it like more dramatic for TV or something. But he's still alive, so we still have potential for that scene. I just had to check in about that because I was like, oh wait, he's still alive? What? This was like a huge revelation to me because my brain was confused. So... I am, like I said, 80% through. My library loan for the audiobook ends tomorrow, and there's people behind me, so I can't renew it. So I'm trying to get it done by the time that comes up, but I I probably won't because I've got a lot going on in tonight's game night, so I won't get a lot of I won't really get reading done tonight. Um, but yeah, I just had to check in about that. Ned Stark is still alive. So I've gotten to 91% in a Game of Thrones. Um, the Starks are at full war now with the Lannisters and um, Catelyn is there with her family and uh, Rob is leading the charge. Then we swing to King's Landing and Cersei has Ned beheaded. So this is where I remember the TV show happening. Um, Arya is there for it. Sansa has to watch it from on top of the dais. It's a horrible scene. Um, they make him confess and admit that Joffrey is the king the rightful heir, and it's just horrible to his honor. Um, Bran says that he hears, he talks to Ned in the crypts back at Winterfell, and but this is before Ned's assassination, or maybe like as it's happening. Um, the timeline is a little, a little confusing in that I don't know exactly when. Okay. Um, so the timeline is a little confusing because it doesn't say exactly when in relation to all the other events that are happening. Um, 
but yeah I am getting very close to the end I have like maybe two and a half hours left on this audiobook so I'll definitely finish it today which is great because I think the end of today my library loan let, runs out on the audiobook so I will probably just unless like something else absolutely crazy happens here at the end I'll probably just finish up and check in again once I'm done so while I was editing my reading vlog for a Game of Thrones I realized I never filmed a concluding video for this, a concluding bit where I finished the book. I finished it and I absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars. Holy freaking cow. I liked this even more than I thought. Like I said before, I really enjoyed the show and I knew I was going to enjoy reading this book. I knew I was going to like this book, but I didn't realize how much I would like it. I absolutely loved it. I loved so much about this and um, because I'm behind on everything this year, this month, this quarter, whatever you want to call it, I'm like so far behind in everything right now. I've already started book two and I am enjoying it so much. I can't wait to see where this story goes. I'm so excited for this story, even more excited than I was when I first started it because I've gotten Game of Thrones down under my belt and I absolutely loved it. I was a little hesitant to think, well, what if I just like it and don't love it and then I'll have to have the rest of this series and everyone's waiting for to hear what I think about it. I absolutely loved it, y'all. I am loving book two, even though I'm very, very, very early in book two, I'm loving everything about this. So I just had to add in a concluding remark for A Game of Thrones. Thank you all for watching this reading vlog. I love y'all to the moon and back, and stay tuned for book two, which will be coming soonish, probably at this rate sometime in early April, now that it is early March, but it will be coming once I finish book two.